Tim, you're planning to recreate Ernest Shackleton's vo amazing voyage in the James Caird. How did that come about? It was Alexandra Shackleton's original brainchild to retrace Shackleton's journey. She really was interested in seeing what it would be like to try things the old way and, and, and try this most amazing of journeys. So, so you know, what's involved now? How, how are you going about it? We're building, we're building the replica boat. That's obviously the first cab off the rank. And, and you can see behind me we're, we're quite a long way down the line to, to having a finished vessel. Then we've got to recruit a crew. And we are, in fact, looking still for some, uh, some money to help this all happen. Now, you mentioned recruiting a crew. I mean, Ernest Shackleton had his own way of going about it. Are you going to do anything similar? Well, I think, you know, a safe return, doubtful style ad would be quite nice. And I think uh, some, of the, some of our film backers are, are suggesting that would be a good way of doing things. And I think it would be a fair way of doing things consistent with the way he did it, so you never know. Yeah. So you say consistent with the way he did it. How you know, close to the, uh, the, the actual uh, journey he did uh, are you going to do? We're going to do it very similar to the way he did it. We'll be, certainly be navigating using a, a, you know, a sextant as he did, or a, as Worsley did at least. We use all the old gear. Uh, last year I did uh, Mawson's journey in Antarctica using all the old Burberry clothing and, and, and woolens and that sort of stuff. So we'll use the same gear as, as uh, Shackleton did, and we'll have a crew of the same number of people, hopefully from the same country, so it'll be the Irish and uh, a Kiwi to represent Worsley, and hopefully some Royal Navy involvement in terms of the British contingent, and of course an Irishman. And is it just going to be the, the sea crossing that he achieved, or are you going for the, uh, the mountain climbing well? I'm, well? I'm a landlubber, basically, so don't ask me any technical sailing questions. Uh, I'm really the, uh, the guy pulling the trip together, and my expertise is really polar man-hauling and climbing. So we, there will be a ship's captain, and uh, my component really is the climbing South Georgia bit. Uh, but of course, it'll be the sea journey followed by the South Georgia climb, the double, as they call it. Yeah. Now it is actually an incredibly hazardous journey, isn't it? And if you're proposing to do it in the James, you know, replica of a James Caird with, with uh, all the equipment they would have had then, uh, those dangers haven't gone away. <laughs> well, that's right. It is a very dangerous journey. I, I very much appreciate that. Uh, it's, a, it's a serious trip. Uh, you know, as and when or if this gets made into a film, people will be watching it at home from the comfort of their living room, watching it, thinking, well, it was, it was sort of preordained to, 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 to succeed or they're all safe because we're watching it on TV. The reality is there's no, there's no guarantee that we're going to complete this or complete it safely. It, 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 so we're being very respectful of what we're up against. And the same was true of your polar walk, I think. The polar walk, the last one I did, it was yeah. very similar. Uh, we were on starvation rations, attempting a manhole. There was a film crew within a few days of us, but the reality is if a blizzard hits in, in Antarctica, you could have a film crew 300 yards away, and in, in whiteout conditions and your tent blowing away, you, you've had it. So I think the viewer tends to over, perhaps overestimate the, the, um, the comfort you get from having a film crew there. We'll also have people somewhere in the Southern Ocean uh, filming, uh, if, if we make a film about this, uh, but it won't give us any real degree of safety. Now on that polar walk, you use the same equipment, the same clothing. As, uh, as was used previously. Yes. You know, yeah. How different was that to modern kit? The old gear, you know, I do a lot of speaking about polar trips and the trips I've done, and people always say, you know, come on, isn't it easier in the modern era? And my stock answer has always been, I don't think so. I think it's uh, man or woman against this place or working with this place. Now, the reality is, having done it the old way, I think you realise just how much more difficult it was to do it wearing the old clothes. You know, Burberry outers, which, which were, you know, the Gore-Tex of the day, pulling very heavy wooden sleds with old hemp rope. Uh, lots of friction when you're dragging them across the snow and, and, and very, very difficult to pull. And canvas, heavy drill canvas tents which absorb all of your exhalation during the night and, and freeze onto the inside of the tent fabric, making it heavier and heavier and heavier. Uh, much, much more difficult doing in the old way. And with this, uh, this voyage in the James Caird, you're going to be using all the same cl old clothes, old stuff? We're going to do it the same as we did the previous one, yeah. which, uh, you know, I'm not want to do reenactments of other people's trips, this will probably be the second and only such trip I'll do. I'm really doing it to honour the memory of Shackleton and all that he achieved, and with a message of, of a group of men really working against the elements to achieve a common goal, which I think resonates with the way the world is today. Yeah. So it's, a very, it's a very apt message. Um, we wish you lots of luck with it. Thank you.